Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Physics Department at the Colorado School of Mines. My name is Eric. And I'm Nicole. Last time, we took a look at how to determine the out-of-plane alignment for a thin film grown on a substrate. The goal today is to introduce phi scans, which rotate the sample about its normal and allow us to probe the in-plane alignment of the film. We want to set up our source and detector to form a delta k that aligns with a g vector at a particular hkl. As an example, consider a film made of a simple cubic structure, and for the moment, let's look at a cell that has a particular in-plane alignment. Does it matter which g vector we align to? Nope, so long as it's a film g vector that is off of the sample normal. Gotcha. So let's choose the sample 101 peak to align our delta k vector to and keep the source and detector fixed in this position. Then, as we rotate the sample, the reciprocal points cross into the delta k vector, and we get reflections every 90 degrees for the 101, 011, minus 101, and the 0, minus 11 reflections, respectively. Indeed, so to bring this back to thin films, imagine looking down on the sample so that the g3 vector is into the board. Crystals that have different in-plane orientations will result in arcs in reciprocal space. Similar to the ones we saw for the omega rocking curve? Yeah, so when we see this peak smearing in a phi scan, this gives us a quantitative measure of the in-plane alignment of our film, much like the omega rocking curve for out-of-plane alignment. And that's all we really wanted to say about phi scans. In short, they're a great way to look at in-plane alignment of a film on a substrate. Here's one to ponder on your own. If you sputtered polycrystalline copper down on the silicon, what would you see with a phi scan? And here's another. You've grown the zinc oxide wurtzite film with the A3 axis normal to the substrate. If you use the 101 reflection, how many peaks will you pick up? So this brings us to the end of our discussion on elastic diffraction. Next week, we'll take a look at how vibrations behave in solids. Thanks for watching Solid State Physics in a Nutshell. See you next time.